Welcome to MEM 05006 Perform Brazing and or Silver Soldering. Welcome to Pertech Learning and Development. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. Make sure you have a copy of the student workbook handy as it'll be useful in completing this unit. Log in regularly to your PMoodle account for the latest notifications, information and resources for your course and unit. Remember, PConnect is another great resource for reference materials for your studies. References. It's impossible to remember everything it's a lot easier to remember where everything is. Professionals need good references. There are plenty of great apps available for your mobile devices. The Machinery's Handbook is another great example of a reference. This is also available as an app for your phone or mobile device. Today, we will be learning about the theory, techniques and equipment related to the silver soldering process. Soldering, brazing, welding. Often these terms can be confusing as there's a lot of gray areas and slang associated with these processes. As demonstrated in this diagram, there are a lot of welding processes and technologies. Irrespective of the categories, they still belong to two main classifications, fusion and filler type welding processes. Oxy LPG is another useful gas welding technology. Before we begin, let's look at what welding means. Welding, the joining of metals using heat to melt a filler rod, a base material, or both. Fusion type welding. This is when the filler rod and base metal both melt and fuse together. Some examples, electric arc welding, induction welding, laser welding. Here we can see that the base metal and the filler rod both have melted to join those two pieces of metal together. Here is an example of fusion welding using a brazing torch. The filler rod is introduced into a puddle of molten base metal created by the brazing torch. Electric arc welding is more efficient for this type of welding. TIG welders work on the same principle of adding the filler rod into a molten puddle of base material. The second type of welding process is the filler type. In this case, only the filler rod is melted. There is a lot of confusion and slang associated with brazing, and in particular, the soldering process. Let's have a look at some of the terms that you'll be coming across. Some of the common terms. Soft solder. Melting the solder using a heating iron or butane flame. It has poor mechanical properties. The second one, hard solder. Melting the solder using an oxyacetylene flame. And it has good mechanical properties. And brazing using an oxyacetylene flame to melt filler rods. This is important. Hard soldering, silver soldering, brazing all mean the same thing, hence the confusion. We will be primarily concentrating on hard soldering in this lecture. For consistency, we will be referring to it as silver soldering from now on, even though this term is being frowned upon in engineering circles. One easy way to remember the difference in soldering types is the temperature. Soft soldering is a low temperature process using soldering irons and butane gas. Hard soldering is a high temperature process which uses an oxyacetylene gas mixture. In soldering, only the filler rod is melted. Here we can see the difference in the filler rod material melting points. For soft solder, it's under 500 degrees Celsius. And for silver solder, it's under 900 degrees Celsius. 
is another term, oxy welding, which is another term for braze welding. The TIG welding process is very similar to brazing, where a filler rod is used. They share similar filler material temperatures also. How does filler type welding work? It uses the capillary action, the ability of a liquid, in this case the molten filler metal, to flow in a narrow or even microscopic space without the assistance or opposition to external forces like gravity. Soft soldering takes place around or up to about 500 degrees Celsius. The soft soldering process is common in electronics and plumbing industries. It has poor mechanical properties. Hard or silver soldering takes place at a temperature up to and around 900 degrees Celsius. Silver soldering creates a strong bond compared to soft soldering due to the involvement of higher temperatures to melt the solder material or filler rod. Do I use hard or soft solder? This depends on the tensile strength and shear strength of the joint or application. For high pressure applications, silver solder is recommended. Silver braze alloys can have a bulk strength up to 482 megapascals. Joint strength depends on several factors, clearance between parts, base metal composition, service temperature and joint quality, low voids, good penetration, joint design will also affect strength. Keep in mind that braze joints are primarily lap joints. So strength is a combination of tensile and shear strength. The only way to accurately determine tensile strength or other values is by testing or using historical data. Here's an example of shear strength. This figure shows the effect of joint clearance on tensile and shear strength of brazed joints. Note that unlike shear strength, tensile strength drastically decreases as the clearance of the parts increase. As we can see from the diagram, there's an optimum clearance between mating parts. Tube cutters, for example, can reduce the size of the tube due to the burnishing effect of the rollers. The burnishing effect also work hardens the material, thus changing the mechanical properties of the metal. For high pressure applications, this could be catastrophic. Use a hacksaw. There are optimum clearances specified by the filler rod manufacturers. Consult their data sheets for the correct clearance for your application. Silver soldering. Let's have a closer look. PPE is important. Overalls, boots, gloves, safety glasses should be a basic requirement even just to enter a work area. Exposure to UV and infrared rays from intense light sources can damage the eyes and skin. Sometimes damage occurs without the worker realising it, since UV and IR radiation can't be seen. You should never braze without eye protection. Clear or lightly tinted flash glasses are okay as far as seeing what you're doing, but over time the light exposure may result in eye damage and fatigue. As a general guideline, torch brazing and soldering, you should be looking at a minimum of shade level three, brazing or welding goggles. Never use cigarette lighters to ignite flammable gas. They can easily melt or rupture resulting in explosions or serious burns. Always use a cup spark lighter. The correct fire extinguisher and fire blanket is a must around any welding activity. The fire extinguisher selector chart indicates that the powder type fire extinguisher is the correct type for our application. Let's have a look at the tools and equipment required for oxyacetylene or brazing or silver soldering operations. Our oxyacetylene plant consists of oxygen and acetylene cylinders, 
cylinder valves and keys, regulators, gauges, hoses, whirling torch. Let's have a look at the cylinders. Cylinders are available in standard sizes and weights. Cylinders are inspected each time they're refilled by the suppliers. Cylinders are color coded, oxygen being black and acetylene being claret. Regulators, hoses and gauges. There are two valves associated with the flow control of gas on a cylinder. One is to isolate the cylinder and the other is to control the pressure. The chart displays the recommended pressures for different brazing tip nozzles. Some pressure gauges are color coded for easy setting. The welding torch. The welding torch consists of control valves. The control valves control the volume of each gas delivered from the regulators to the welding tip. The handpiece. This is the actual hand section of the welding torch. It's where you hold it. The mixer, which mixes the two gases ready for burning at the welding tip. And the welding tip, the actual burner of the blowpipe. It takes the mixed gas and fuel from the mixer and passes it through the correct size hole for the required flame size. The tip size controls the amount of heat and the speed of the heating process. To make the whole process even more confusing, tip sizes come in metric or inch. Refer to your specific user manual as tip size is usually associated with metal thickness. This chart describes the different tip sizes required for different materials and sizes. Flame types and adjustment. There are three main flame types. Neutral, which is balanced. Excess acetylene, which is carburizing. And excess oxygen, which is oxidizing. Flame types. There are three types of flame. The first and most commonly used is the neutral flame. As it does not change the mechanical properties of the material we're brazing. A neutral flame has a balanced ratio of acetylene and oxygen. In today's example, we will be silver soldering mild steel to copper, and as per our list, we'll be utilizing the neutral flame. Carburizing, not as hot as the neutral flame, but the excess acetylene deposits carbon onto the surface, creating localized hardening of the metal. Hence, it's not suitable for metals with iron content. The oxidizing flame is the opposite of the carburizing flame as it has more oxygen than acetylene. This flame is hotter than the other two. Metals with iron content will undergo a chemical reaction, damaging their mechanical properties. This makes the metal porous and brittle. Cast iron is an exception as it is resistant to oxidization. Another form of oxidizing flame is oxy-cutting. Introducing additional oxygen melts the steel away. Nozzles and the maintenance of nozzles. Nozzles can be easily damaged. Care should be taken in handling and maintaining these devices. Nozzle tip cleaners are available in all the major nozzle tip sizes. A flashback arrestor is a type of one-way valve that prevents the gas igniting in the handpiece or hoses. These can come fitted to the handpiece or to the regulator. Silver soldering, cleaning and preparing the joints. The type of joint and fit is important to ensure a joint is fit for purpose. We'll be concentrating on the lap and butt lap joints in this lecture. Roundness is critical to ensure the correct clearance on a joint. Make sure the joint is not damaged or squashed during handling or cutting. Use appropriate vice jaws when holding tubes in vices. Burrs of residual material can interfere with the fit of mating fittings and tubes. Use deburring tools and reamers to remove any burrs. Prepare the mating surfaces. A good, clean, oil-free surface is critical for a successful joint. Use emery cloth, scotch bright, or a wire brush to prepare and clean the surface. Fitting, supporting, and assembling the work. Use a hacksaw to cut your tube, especially when the joints require mechanical properties. Tube cutters change the size and shape of the tube during cutting. Use a hacksaw. Assembling and holding your work. 
unless you have four arms, you're going to need to think about how you're going to hold the work for brazing, especially if sizing and angles are critical. We've prepared the surface. We've cleaned the surface. Now we apply flux. The flux protects the area from oxidization and promotes the flow of filler rod and promotes the capillary action. In this example, I will be civil soldering copper to steel with a 45% silver filler rod. In this case, my filler rod data sheet specifies the easy flow flux. Heating the area. Heat the whole area, but concentrate most of the heat on the thickest part of the joint. As I am brazing copper to steel, I will be using a neutral flame. Applying the brazing or filler rod. I have selected the 45% silver filler rod as the selection chart recommends this for copper to steel brazing. This particular brand of brazing rod comes pre-flux, so adding of flux to joints is optional. Introducing the rod onto the joint. Firstly, heat the part evenly. Concentrate the heat on the thickest part of the joint. Step two, the flux will boil off and the area will become a cherry red. Step three, probe the area with the filler rod until it starts to melt. Step four, if the rod starts to melt, move the torch away and feed in the filler rod. Step five, if you need to reheat the joint, move the filler rod away. Do not directly heat the filler rod. Cooling the joint appropriately. It is important to allow the job to cool naturally for a minimum of 60 to 90 seconds before quenching slowly in warm water. Moving the job prematurely may disturb or weaken the joint. A wet rag can also be used to cool down the joint on assemblies. Cleaning and inspecting the joints. All flux and welding residue must be removed prior to inspection of the joint. Otherwise, it will mask any defects or imperfections. Residue can also promote corrosion and result in poor product appearance. Here is an example of a clean and unclean brazed fitting. Let's shut down. First, we'll close off the oxygen, then the acetylene. Then we close off the uh, oxygen and acetylene bottles. Purge any residual oxygen in the lines. Then close off the oxygen regulator. Then repeat the purging and isolation procedure for the acetylene line. Inspect, secure and stow the equipment. And remember, don't wrap hoses around gauges. Just a quick look at soft solder. Soft solder melts at around 400 degrees Celsius. It is not suitable for joints that require mechanical properties. It is extensively used in the plumbing and light fabrication areas. Pictured as a disposable butane cylinder. Note that some solders contain lead and are not suitable for plumbing applications.